Hello, Leo, and welcome to your April forecast. I'm Nicholas Ashbaugh. Good to see everybody. We're going to be taking a look today at your energy for the month ahead. This can be used for sun rising and moon sign, and it's going to help you plan for the next six to eight weeks. Uh, I always like to begin my readings with channeled messages. Today is no exception. As I was focusing on your sign this morning and tapping into it in dreams, what I saw was uh, basically this sort of maturing energy, a maturation of the inner child. And I even felt a little bit of sort of nostalgia, maybe it was mournful, but also there is this sense of being ready to take on the next big thing. So it's growing up basically, right? The inner child was there to say, don't forget about me. And also remember, you can access that sort of joy, playful energy anytime you want, maybe minus the naivete of youth, but there's still that connection to um, the spirit of discovery. So spirit is saying it's okay to continue to move on. We don't have to fight against time or maturation, but what came through was an opportunity to heal some wounds from the past. Many of you know that I do a live stream every Sunday and invariably one of the topics that almost never makes it uh, to the top is inner child healing. Well, I have good news for you. That's one of the things that we'll be focusing on here today because the inner child said we have some work to do. So when I look at the Celtic cross in just a few moments, I'll pay attention to the deep past and recent past because those are going to be the karmic wounds or, or the karmic energies that we need to focus on here. One of the other things here, and these are easy, the last two bullets are the fun ones. Create some joy in your life. It's good to like leave space for playtime as an adult. And this can be, you know, going to a sporting event, watching a movie, doing something artistic, hanging out with your friends, hanging out with your family as well. Also, think back to what you thought you would be doing at this age when you were a little kid. Um, so when I grow up, I want to fill in the blank. Are you doing that? Or if you made a promise to yourself, uh, you know, I'm going to learn from my family and not do this. I'm going to do this when I grow up. Now is a time to take one of those promises that you made to yourself, pull them into your energy and say, I hear you. I remember you. Let's do it. Okay. So I'll focus on that in the spread in just a moment, but let's touch on this one first. Um, as I woke up, I meditated a little bit more and I thought, why did the inner child come through? And what spirit showed me was this big portal or open door. And then I, I saw the world card within it. The world card, of course, represents a portal in and of itself. And just like the title here, it's about moving onward, upward, sometimes going beyond your wildest expectations. So once you heal and, um, and sort of recognize whatever it is from the past that needs to be released, then suddenly there's nothing but opportunities that'll be knocking. Uh, this month in particular, we're going to be looking at areas where you could focus on networking, um, new areas where you could find uh, either recognition or for a business, it might be a chance to make a splash. I'll be, I'll be looking at all of those expansion opportunities and some of you might be moving too. We'll see where the movement exists. That last question is the most important. Um, we, we have this end and beginning that's kind of happening at once in the best sense of the word, something ending because it's done, something beginning because you've done all the work to call it in. So are you ready? That, that's the main question here. And if you are ready, I think some great things are coming. All right, just a reminder, this can be used for sun, rising, moon, and Venus. And again, this is for the month ahead. So we're going to be looking at the energy of April. Ganesha here to help us with the uh, catalyst.
Wow, um, such a powerful spread. I kept myself quiet here while I was pulling everything, um, but I see big change, change for the better, um, a recalibration, but overall pretty darn good, I have to say. Let's begin, of course, as promised with your catalyst energy. You received Ganesha with the message of insight here. So Ganesha, of course, helps you get past a block in your life. And the key to getting unblocked is understanding, research. So for some of you, this can be seeking out or finding a mentor or expert that can help shed some light on something. For many of you, this can also just be about tuning in to your inner high priestess and really trusting in your own insights. So if you have it, use it. If you need information, seek it. The Basically, the way to get past fear, and I think that's what Ganesha is kind of putting uh, the pulse on here, is to inform yourself. Sometimes it just feels good to know how others have done it, or that it is possible, or simply knowing that you've done all of the research and homework necessary to basically land on your feet. And folks, as we take a look at your center card, that's really what this month is offering up to you. We have six of wands right at the center. This card is success. And so one of the things that the card is reminding you to do, we see her embracing the spotlight. It's saying, I'm ready to receive. Any of the four aces, it's like the universe handing you something. It, it needs, you, you know, it needs open hands to receive. So open yourself to receive love, abundance, and opportunity in the highest forms. And in doing so, you have a really good chance of it. Also, this is saying when success comes, not if, when success meets you this month in any part of your life, don't second guess that. Say, thank you. I worked hard for that. I'm ready for this opportunity. There's a lot of hands that are raised here. So what happens sometimes with you stepping into a spotlight or um, something working in your favor, there can be questions, there can be a little bit more scrutiny, but you know what? You have what it takes. So just face things with um, confidence, with clarity, with honesty, and you're set up for success here. The Six of Wands is very, very good. So this month overall is opening up a breakthrough moment, a spotlight moment, a chance for you to succeed at something that perhaps in the past um, eluded you or you had difficulty in, in grasping. But here it is saying, let's do this. I'm equally as heartened by the card that's crossing the center. We have the Queen of Cups here. Of course, this can represent a positive development in relationships. Uh, in shorthand, this means this can be new love. It can mean that a relationship is ready to go to the next level. It can also be really good, by the way, for those of you in business or school, because this is recognition and this is you feeling good. And it's just great energy vibing off of one another. This is also just creativity and downloads. You can even see her bringing that information through from her higher self. Very productive month, very good month to make a splash. Queen of Cups is the perfect card for that because she's good at both um, sending things out and also receiving things. All the Queen cards are better receptors than the King cards, so that is good. Sending and receiving creative energy, um, giving and taking when it comes to relationships, and just generally being in a better place with respect to heart, um, heart chakra, happiness, and as we look at the healing card here in just a moment, I really feel like you can handle anything that comes your way because of this power card here at the center. So if you're looking for love, great possibility for that. I will say this is karmic in nature if it's new love. Even existing relationships with so many um, past life symbols here, I would say what we really have is two people that have been together before. And so that sometimes makes it a little bit more complicated because you're not just dealing with the present narrative, you're dealing with several lifetimes of experience. So I'll do my best to, to pull at that when we get into relationships or just observe it as we go through the spread here. All right, first card, this is the inner child coming through. Um, this is the younger version of yourself coming through as well saying, here's something we can work on. The seven of swords, of course, is accountability. Now, if we're looking at the inner child, it isn't always the inner child that's lacking it. I would say, you know, nine times out of 10, if this card comes through for a child, it can be a lack of accountability, support, or predictability when it comes to parents, teachers, and environment. Some of you just didn't have the support you needed. Mom, dad, teacher, etc., said they were going to do something, they didn't. And then that leads to a little bit of a soul scar where you start to worry that it's hard to trust people. 
So what we're going to do this month, if you're ready, is say spirit that was an uncomfortable, maybe even an unfortunate experience that I had to go through, but I don't need to repeat it anymore. And I don't feel like, well, first of all, it's not just that you don't feel like, you know that you deserve better. So release the connection to this feeling that it's going to be difficult to trust. Just know that one or two or a couple people let you down, but not everybody in your future is going to have that same energy. In fact, because you've done the work, um, because you're ready to release this cycle, it will be released. Sometimes that's all the universe needs to hear is that you're ready. So if you feel like that's part of your narrative, please meditate on the fact that you're done with it and release it with, with a sense of complete peace. Say, I've learned my lesson and I don't need to repeat it. Um, or, you know, that wasn't what I needed or deserved at the time. I'm ready for more because the universe wants to give you more, but it needs you to believe. Sometimes there's just disbelief. Like I said, when I saw this, if you're disbelieving it, don't. It's good. People see that they, there's something here to love and to embrace. Okay. So that's one section of the folks that are walk, watching. Now the rest here, what we also get is that you may be dealing with someone in the present that isn't keeping their promises. When someone shows their true colors with appreciation, clarity, and absolute, just sort of like, <laughs> what's the best word? Just gratitude. Say, I'm so glad I know now. I'm not going to waste any more time. So if you're in the presence of the Seven of Swords, you can have a direct conversation saying this isn't right and it can't happen again or, or whatever. But on some levels, you're also severing ties with that because this isn't worth your time and energy. The third group of people that might be watching, there's one more message coming through because um, I'm doing a, a, a wide reading here for everyone. This is just about the promises that we keep or make to ourselves. It's, it's about keeping those. So accountability works in all directions, including internally. So that's why I was talking about that inner child, which we saw on the Six of Cups card, same deck I'm using because I really love this. Um, so in this card, we see the young child and puppy and then the adult and the grown up dog. And it's basically saying, you've got to keep your promises to yourself. If there's something you said that you were going to work on, now is the time to be true to that inner child and say, yes, I've got you. We'll do it. I'm sorry it took so long. It's the little white lie that we tell to ourselves sometimes. Oh, this won't matter. I can get away with this. Or, or again, you just forgot you made a promise. Let's not do that this month. Let's really just be accountable. Let's hold others to that same accountability. And let's release cycles of any experiences with any people, places, or things that lack accountability. That is going to help you have a firmer foundation upon which great, joyful, abundant things can come through in alignment with what I was talking about in the world card. Doing the work, recent past. This is what for many of you is going to color the first part of the month here. Five of Wands. So this is actually a nice version of the Five of Wands because we can see that if they can just sort of work together, they could build a ladder to reach that torch of light there. Usually in the Five of Wands, they're pushing all of those against each other and not making progress. It's, it's a stagnation or stalemate. And so this one, we're starting to see that there is recognition that together we're stronger, that there doesn't have to be one voice that's louder or more popular or whatever, better or worse. It's letting go of all of that and just seeing that we succeed together. And that is the center card. And um, one person's success is also the group's success. Make sure you share the love. This is love. This is success. Share the love with the group that also made it possible. Gratitude, generosity, and, um, and then also this is a good type of leader. Queen of Cups is compassionate. She listens. She focuses. She shares appreciation with others. She's a very good kind of mentor, boss, and leader. You can be that this month. Even if it lacked sort of presence in your life before, you didn't have someone like that. You can be that. You can lead the way. And all of this leads us to the most powerful card. And it's really nicely positioned and illustrated. Death. And where is it? It's in the crowning space, which means that many of you know what you want to do. And what does the reaper do? It reaps rewards. It creates something new. It opens up the portal. And I love that this particular personification of death is just that. It's, 
it's a portal in the shroud of something that has yet to be revealed. So you just have to say, let's go for it. I'm ready. You're going to remove the shroud of uncertainty and just go for this. Um, death. We can take it at face value. There could be something that comes to a close. I chose the world card, but they're very similar in function. The thing with death and the difference between death and the world is this is happening. The change is, is underway. World, you see someone stepping through the portal. Um, in fact, I'll bring that one up as well. So they're both nicely connected to the energies that we're talking about. So here's your difference between the two, but they're both portal cards. The world just has a little bit more presence of mind and that person can kind of step through it. So with this, whether you like it or not, something has changed or is changing, movement has to happen, and you get to be an agent of it. Be the agent of change, okay? I mentioned ends and beginnings. This particular death card has both. So what is one of the changes coming through? Let's just show you the spread so you can see it. As you let go of this cycle, this is the death cycle, as you step into the rebirth cycle, which is six of wands and queen of cups, now we have the lovers. People are taking note of you. This can definitely represent new love. Um, we have both water and earth coming together here in the spread, um, but this can also just be, like I said, a magnetic card. So in business, this is you know, customer satisfaction, a five-star rating, um, a great article being written about you, etc. Um, in personal development, it can just be people seeing that you've done the work, that you've made the change. Um, in love, it's really good. This is reciprocity. And because we have two cards of death, like I said, this is past life. And both of you have been working really hard to do the work internally to make changes. So like energy attracts like energy. And again, we have love and success and hard work and change all coming through at just the right time. Um, so yes, this is a perfect time to find love if you're looking for love. This is the perfect time to launch a project or to announce something new. If you send out some sort of an email blast with the lover's card energetically aligned with it, people are like, oh yes, we've been waiting for this. And they click and they, you know, they like, they subscribe, they buy, whatever it is. This is good energy, okay? So I love that this is coming forth as near future. Keep doing the work, it's worth it. We can often look at the three cards um, in the center and they tell a story. So this is the work, this is the recognition, and this is the enjoyment. Don't give up. This leads into this. Five of wands leads to the six of wands. And just remember to share the love because there's a lot of love um, that's going, a lot of TLC here, and then a lot of love um, as a result. How are you showing up? You are working hard, but you could be working smarter. The Seven of Wands can handle anything that happens, basically, anything that comes your way. What I love about this Seven of Wands is she's not defensive. Traditional Seven of Wands is pushing out that wand, a little, you know, little bit frustrated, definitely having to be a little defensive. She's not. She's just saying, um, you do this, I'll do this, I'm going to let go of this. She very much is clear, cool, calm, and collected. Let's put it that way. And also, if people come knocking and they're a little pushy, just like the Queen of Cups, she listens and she, she assesses, what is your energy? What is my energy? What do I need to focus on? Is this worth my time? She's discerning. And so is this Seven of Wands. They're listening first. They're turning that ear and thinking, is this worth my time? If it is, fight the fight. If it isn't, let it go. Pick and choose your battles wisely. Generally with this, it comes because we have a story here. Um, we have two cards of recognition, six of wands. We have more recognition in the three of pentacles. And now seven of wands is happening. Five, six, seven. Hard work, recognition, more people want what you have to offer or they're seeing that you've done a good job and they're like, we can put more on this person's plate. So you just have to be discerning and also don't, don't stress. You'll get as much done as you can get done. Whatever you want, you communicate that progress or status and, and you know, it's, it's a team operation here. Remember that. We don't have the 10 of wands here. You don't have to shoulder the full burden. This is a teamwork month um, and we have two cards, uh, actually three cards, but two optimal cards here with the lovers and the three of pentacles. The Three of Pentacles, as you can see here, it's not one person doing all the work. It's three. There's a leader. There's leadership opportunities all over the place. But 
um, but it is leading a team and working together with that team. So uh, that's one thing that I want to highlight. This card can represent going to school, to college in particular, or even just getting a really um, specialized certification. Whatever you want to learn or absorb this month, even if it wasn't an example that I just cited, you can do. It's a hands-on sort of card, both the Three of Pentacles and the Eight of Pentacles. The difference here is you're closer to completion. Um, this is mastering the task at hand or mastering a, um, a skill or whatever. You're going to be able to fully come out as an expert and your insight will be sought after. Don't second guess your insight. That was the first card that we got. The catalyst was people now want um, to understand how you got through it. How did you fix something? That's one of the cool things is you don't have to be perfect. You just have to learn from your mistakes and then you can teach others if you want to. There's definitely some teacher energy that's coming forth here with this as well. To that end, this can be a curriculum. It can be a written document. Uh, this doesn't have to just be, by the way, something that you would put out creatively like a book. This could be something of scientific notability. So like, um, again, maybe for some of you, you're working on a patent, a trademark, a scientific document, a curriculum, or just putting something together instructional in value. People are going to look at that and be able to use it as a blueprint. Okay. One last thing here. This is unique. Only when I'm reading with this particular deck, it's just to get your signals right. So if you're communicating, because this is not the right order for the traffic signals. Um, so if, if you are interested, say you're interested. If you're not, say you're not interested. And the other thing here is if, if you want to move on, say goodbye and, and close the chapter because we did have the death card. Don't go someone. We didn't get the four of swords or six of swords. Um, so there's a chance here to leave things on a really good note. And also, even at the beginning, if you're not feeling some sort of a spark, like if it's a date or something, just say, I had a great time, but I'm not feeling it. But thank you for a really good meal. And, you know, whatever. You just you don't have you don't have to sort of like leave people hanging. Let them know in the moment. Uh, and it's going to save you a lot of time and energy and it gets you out of this. So lead by example, show the integrity that you're going to be honest and free someone if you're not interested. And if somebody ghosts you, I don't know why it's coming through, but it is. Um, if someone just can't tell you what they want you to hear or you need to hear, it's okay. Just focus on something else. Focus on what you can have an impact or a connection to. And again, accept it. Sometimes we just have to say that person isn't as communicative or direct as me, and I'm not going to impose my style on them because this card wasn't forceful. It was saying, I'm going to take a step back. If they need that space or if they're having difficulty with confrontation, um, that's okay. I, you know, I, I don't need to push it. I'm going to focus on where the doors are opening, not where they're closing. Okay. Very specific message I got there because of the signals, because of mixed signals and the two death cards. It would, wouldn't be intrinsic to this normally. Um, Unex this can also be, by the way, unexpected success. So we have one thing here that you thought would happen, perhaps, but there's something else coming on the heels of this where it's a happy surprise. Okay, now we have the King of Pentacles. This is representing hopes, fears, and opportunities. By the way, this was in the environment. So um, for some of you, there could also be a contract that is requiring your signature. So this could be good, very good news. Um, and now we have you looking at this and thinking, what do I want? Hopes, fears, and opportunities. Some of you, when you receive what it is that you, you set out to do, there is a fear, like I said sometimes, of am I ready? Is this too much? Can I handle it? So really work on just saying thank you in that situation. Some of you need to ask or step up to the plate and say, you know what, I'm tired or I need some assistance on this and I've done a lot here. I need some support here. Can I count on you? This is a card of asking for whatever it is that you need in your life, uh, especially if you tend to be that paternal force that we see here, the caretaker, the provider, the one that sort of creates a foundation. I don't really read gender. It can be anybody and any sort of facet of your life. But if you're the one that's the giver, um, and this is the month to say, I need to get some support here. OK, so don't be afraid to do that. The other word that's coming to mind is renovation. This card can represent your home. So some of you may decide to move around the money a little bit and say, I'm going to do some home improvements. I'm specifically seeing like office 
or common spaces. So some of you might be deciding to do it there. And that is nicely tying into the outcome, which is two of pentacles, a choice. You can't do everything, you can't please everyone. You have to make a choice and prioritize. And you have to see where the big pull is. Here she has sort of that higher self and then the coin purse here. She's trying to think like which one makes the most sense. So for each of you, you're really gonna have to tune into the heart and say, is this gonna bring me closer to my goals? Is this addressing some of the things that I've always wanted to do? What, what makes sense? I view it as balance, oftentimes work and life balance, but it can also be health and work or anything in general. Um, but usually there's a couple of things tugging at one another and you have to say, this is the priority. This can still be done, but I need to shift out when or how much I'm giving to that. All right, choose the one thing where you can make the biggest impact and that's key. And again, these two cards are complementary. This is saying, I'm out of balance. Can I get some support from you? Look at the people that you've been loyal to and provided to and, and lean on them, especially if they're coming through and maybe even offering up some support. It can be hard, but this is the time to say, you know what, thank you and yes. Okay, let's expand this and take a deeper dive into health, wealth, love and destiny where I can give you some more specificity on each. Uh, we're gonna start off first with your health card and health is your mind, body and spirit. Really interesting that we have someone coming out of hibernation. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're just coming into springtime and um, many of you may feel like this bear coming out of the cave thinking, oh, I, you know, I'm tired. <laughs> uh, maybe even with the change of, for many of us, the change of time. We just had it in the States. I think in Europe, it's happening closer to the 20th. Um, you know, it, it can do a little bit of, you know, <laughs> mind tricks with your, your sort of circadian rhythm. So make sure that you're taking care of that for sure. This is also a card of not feeling like you have to be defensive. I'll pull the traditional seven of wands here in just a second, but she's showing us that it's important to stay cool and calm and collected. Let me show you the original card and we can discuss the differences between them. But while I'm getting it, I'll talk a little bit here. Um, for many of you, you may feel obligated to explain why you're making a change in your life. Um, or someone may come forth with some sort of criticism or opinion. And what you want to do is like that seven of wands that I just showed you, take it in stride and think, you know, how important is this person? Uh, why perhaps is this triggering me? Is it worth the time and energy of having an actual reply? And if it isn't, you're just going to let it fall off your back like rain. <laughs> Here's your traditional seven of wands. And if you look at this guy close up, he's in it. He's, he's feeling it. That's a lot. And look at the difference between these two. She's like, okay, I'm, I'm not really bothered by that. He's more bothered by it. And that I would connect more with the bear energy. Bears can be either cool, calm and collected, or you can poke the bear and someone may be poking you and uh, you're going to take a deep breath and rather than roar <laughs> or show the claws or have a 10 of swords moment, you're just going to sort of say, okay, this is not going to trigger me. And I really think that's the opportunity here is to know your triggers and move away from those and um, maybe give someone fair warning, say, this isn't appropriate uh, and um, I'm not gonna respond to that. That's a great way to let people know that they've crossed a boundary. Just say, I'm not going to even dignify that with a response, please stop. And that's my advice on that. Sleep patterns though, definitely with this change of season affecting it, whether it's spring or fall, because I know I have different hemispheres watching me. It's the same sort of thing. Um, change in season, change of time, traveling a lot, all of that stuff can affect the sleep and wake cycles and um, do with that what you may. But the other thing on this one was just patience and temper and knowing what your triggers are so that you don't um, kind of, again, engage in a way that you might regret later. Okay, specifically looking at um, other health things that may be coming through. So don't overextend yourself, especially when it comes to work. We have three cards here associated with work and time. Three of Pentacles, King of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles. The three is really good and so is the King. So I feel like what's happening here is just more good stuff, but just more stuff. And so you have to you have to put a line in the sand or ask for more. So for those of you, we'll be looking at work in a few moments, but if success has found its way to your doorstep 
and now you know you have more customers or clients than you can keep up with or more on your desk than you can deal with i remember this much from business if you're a business and um, my business classes i should say if you're a business and, and you can't keep up something's wrong with the price um, you can adjust it so that you're fitting that perfect sort of margin of um, you know maybe charging a little bit more having a little bit of available inventory work with your advisor on that obviously but you could have something that's either wrong with how quickly things are being produced what the price point is um, or maybe even just making sure that you know you're not over advertising and not being able to keep up with that demand there's many things to look at but if you're in high demand you're worth more that much i know for sure and you can then have a leveraging point too so um a conversation point rather so when you're in you know talking about your plan for the next year this is again for those of you that are, have a current job you can say you know i've produced this it's uh, led to this success i've been working x amount of time over time i'm exhausted i think we need some help and i think i'm worth more because of all of this what are we going to do to you know get me to that next level so you'll find a better way to communicate it but it's coming through in health because time is valuable and you are valuable so i just want to put that out there some of you had a close call. This is a brush with a health issue or a wake up call because maybe someone in your own life, in your own family rather, um, you know, had something that they weren't successful at battling. And you're like, you know what? I don't want that to be a repeat in, in my own life. So you're going to take a note from their challenge and say, I'm going to make the necessary changes. You're going to lean on experts, get some insight into it so that you can live um, differently, right? This is just an awakening too. For some of you, you're like, I'm really finished with something. It can be what I saw in my dreams, which is a realization of our own age or mortality on the planet, which is a healthy thing, by the way, to know that there are a finite amount of days, so let's make the most of it. I don't look at it from a depressing point of view. It's more sort of like what I just mentioned. My time is valuable. How does this add or subtract from the joy, opportunity, and growth in my life? If it's subtracting, it's a no. If it's adding, it's a yes. And if it's somewhere in the middle, we got to figure out how to move it more towards the positive. So looking at things and thinking, I never say life is short because we don't want to put that out there, but life is finite. Does this add to my life in a way that is significant and fulfilling that's your big quote that that's the thing like you can actually you know we see like the feather and the scale with the heart and all of that it's the same sort of thing you're measuring this does it make your heart heavier or lighter and if it is making it heavier it's not what you want to focus on okay that's that <laughs> um just a lot of energy around work so make sure that you're creating some time for joy take a vacation take a break very important um this is also about keeping it real. Spirit will do this when necessary. So if you said you were gonna do something but you're not, be honest with yourself and your doctor and or your family. So just accountability. If there's someone around you that can't be accountable, um, you know that you can't change them sometimes. They have to reach that point, sometimes it's bottom, for them to reach out and say, okay, this isn't working. This is particularly for those of you that know someone that's an addict or just doesn't live healthy. Uh, they have to make the decision themselves. So remember here, we can't push. You're not going to be pushed and you're not going to be pushy. You're going to keep a door, doorway open and just say, come to me when you're ready. I have some expertise here, but you're not going to force it. All right. Let's see if there's anything else here. It's pretty good overall. So just being honest with yourself and others, finding the necessary balance, whether it's time, energy, or money, and um, not being afraid to sort of step into that spotlight because I really do feel like this is recognition, this is love, this is more recognition, this is love. Like we have a common theme here that if you put yourself out there, it looks like some good things are about to come forth. So I like that. Keep the temper. Um, and keep the sort of sleep energy balanced out, and that's gonna be also important. 
If you feel stuck, now is the time to make the change. If not now, then when? That's a perfect segue into the next topic, which is wealth. And in the wealth area, we have a loan, a card here for some of you that represents this period of isolation or maybe feeling a little bit cut off. And this is one of the areas that can change this month because um, this is a lot like the Hermit traditional card here where you have to kind of go into this moment. For some of you, it was because you wanted to learn. Um, so insight is one of the key themes and reasons that we hermit. But once we've learned things, once we have that spark of knowledge or insight, it's time to come out of the hermit phase and kind of go into the star, which he has right there in the lantern. So um, this is basically an invitation to share what you've learned. The star made an appearance also right between the lovers. So this is a chance for others to really connect with you and possibly even take what it is that you have to share with the world because we're looking at career and help you get out of your shell. Some of you want to be more extroverted, but possibly need um, an extrovert in your life to take you to the next level. For instance, professionally, we have people that do that. They are PR specialists. They are, um, you know, agents and, and press specialists and things like that. So there are definitely people that do um, PR marketing and all of that stuff. And this is a time to lean on them, um, especially if you're feeling like I've done all I can do. Uh, this is the time to do that. If you happen to work on your own, uh, this is also an invitation to connect with people outside of work, by the way. So saying yes to invitations to a friend's party, to a wedding, to even a networking event, but, but more about sort of like friends and extracurricular activities because um, it's going to help you have variety, grounding, and, and have that sort of personal touch in your life that might be missing, particularly if you work remotely like I do or you work on your own like I do. So I always try to take one or two days of the week and do like a lunch or a brunch or something with a friend or family member um, that I haven't seen in a long time. And it really does help me get inspired and have fun uh, and get back into work too because I've given myself that sort of self-care, okay? So take care of yourself. Let's break this down now into three categories. We're gonna look at those in a job looking for work or those that are happily retired. I also put students in that category, so we'll look at that in a second as well. All right, starting off first with those that currently have a job. It's a good month. Um, so let's look at, there are two scenarios. For those that are doing very, very well, what I see is a breakthrough moment. So we have hard work, leadership, and recognition that is gonna probably for some of you change your job function in a substantial and positive way. There is a trade-off here though. There may be more hours of work than you want or there, may, there could be a, lo a location change because this is a travel card. So you'll have to weigh that. And you know, like I said, if you're really doing great, you have a little bit of leverage, use it, okay? That's one subset. Some of you just lost a job you can tune into the next portion here, but I will say this, it's for the best. Some of you might even be relieved on some levels, um, and we'll talk about it in a moment, but things came to pass for a reason, and it feels like for some of you there was, people just, they weren't coming through with promises. This is one thing, like for, for those that are working right now, even if you were successful, make sure you're getting this in writing and you really are um, scrutinizing the contract. Because with that historically maybe not coming through, you need to make sure it's all in writing, okay? So if change is happening, it's for the better, whether it's going up or move. Remember I said it could be moving up, moving on, or moving out, or just moving. Any form of change this month is for the best. Just scrutinize and make sure that anything from the past that you didn't like is done and isn't going to repeat itself. Um, make sure you're getting ample compensation because uh, that can be another thing that's going on here and make sure that when it comes to intellectual property and any sort of patents that you're not signing away too much for sure you want to look at that i think that for many of you just saying no is a big opportunity right now if you don't like the offer if there's too much on your plate if you're not interested be honest this in reverse is just kind of like knowing when enough is enough and saying that and um keep doing good quality work. These two cards are showing that it's paying off. So continue to put the 
quality and it's more about the quality than the quantity. So doing less but doing it better is really how you can continue to be successful because you'll have more to give at the end of the day. All right, so by and large, good. Big change is happening. Change, no matter how it kind of ends up, is going to be for the best. So whether you're moving up, moving on, or moving out, or just moving, that's what I see. Some of you may also be um, tapped on the shoulder because you have expertise somewhere. Also, don't be afraid to sort of surface up something that people didn't know about if you have a special skill. You should be compensated for that skill as well. Okay, some of you lost your jobs and uh, you know, you're know you a little bit worried here. The good news though is I like, I like what I see here with Six of Wands, Lovers, and Three of Pentacles. It feels like you could land on your feet quicker than usual, uh, reach out to that network. These, this is professional network. This is friends and loved ones. From that, there'll be at least one option that kind of surfaces. Um, it may not happen overnight. This can be like six or seven weeks, but a month to a month and a half, um, we see something coming forth. Uh, I'm always honest about timelines when I see them. So sooner than later. And also there's support. There might even be something short term, a couple weeks, couple days, whatever to, fill, to tide you over here. Um, there might be a couple options on the table. For those that are just generally seeking, you haven't lost work, here's what I see. Um, it's time to look at something from a completely different perspective. You may have gotten burned out in the past job. You may feel like the last thing that you want to do is go back into the same industry. This could lead to this, which is I want to learn something different. I want to take these skills and change them up a little bit. I'm all for that. I think that could be really beneficial for you. It's worth mentioning that like, you don't have to pass out of this body and be reborn in order to reinvent yourself. Uh, this is a chance, literally, since the Three of Pentacles was reversed, to flip the script, um, to take your skill set and turn it around two or three times. I know I've done that for myself uh, in my own career. Uh, I've had a lot of different hats that I've worn. And just with this cool thing that I'm doing with the podcast recently, it's almost like it came full circle. It was the first thing that I studied when I went to college was journalism. And when I did the podcast, I had so much fun. And it was so natural and I thought to myself, well, yeah, you studied it. It was your first sort of like thing that you wanted to do. So, um, but I did all these other things because, you know, when I was in school, the internet became really big, dot com companies and all that stuff was happening. Then I kind of took my turn in studios and worked in all these different things. And then I kind of came back and I'm like, yeah, I kind of miss this. I want to do this again. But now I'm doing it in a very different form because when I studied journalism, there was no YouTube and there was no way to kind of do what I'm doing, but I'm putting my skills to a new sort of um, package. So, you know, if you have the expertise to do something, you can adjust it based on new technology new environments, new interests, and new skills, and you can recombine them in a way that's really compelling. So have some fun and reinvent yourself. And even if you're doing something that, you know, is from the past, you could be doing it in a way that is completely relevant, interesting, and invigorated by the present. So mix and match, shift it around, and flip the script this month. You can do it, but maybe in a way that no one else has done it, including yourself. So have some fun, play with all of the colors in the palette, all of the tools in the toolbox and create something new. This is a nice segue into the next section, which is students. So some of you may decide in order to make this change or to do the pivot that I was just talking about, you wanna go back to school. So before I hit those that are retired, let's talk first about students. This could be a first-time student or non-traditional student coming back to school after a certain amount of time working. In that category, it's gonna be really, really good. You're gonna love that you're doing this for yourself. It is going to lead to success. There is a challenge on how to make this happen. You may have to pull it out over a longer period, maybe a combination of working and school at the same time, uh, or just take, a, take your time so that you can budget it in, but it is worth it. Um, and for some of you, I don't get that this is a full traditional sort of thing. It might just be um, one or two semesters, one or two years. Maybe some of you are finishing up something. Um, either way, I really like it and I think it could be beneficial. All students right now, um, it's time to do it differently. So differently than your parents did, 
to, to also maybe look for a school that's kind of a, the best word that comes to mind is like disruptor. So they have a non-traditional program or an unusual approach. Something about that is going to be good. Cutting edge right now is what you need. You can change your major if you want to. You can go back and finish something that you didn't before and do so successfully this time. That's the main energy that I see here. Just make sure you love it, okay? Now let's take a look at those that are retired. First and foremost, good for you. You worked hard to get to this moment. Um, just like I was picking up on in my dreams, for some of you, there is this understanding that time doesn't go on forever. And so now more than ever, do what you love. I think that people, it's, it's the connections that matter. Making an impact in people's lives and also feeling that sense of being loved and appreciated, that's number one. So some of you are just prioritizing relationships and connecting with others. Your own creative gifts are coming forth in a way that you maybe didn't give yourself time to do it before. So whether that's singing, painting, writing, doing something that just, and dancing, anything creative, anything that your heart desires, that's also potentially gonna help you meet new people, by the way. So uh, we'll be talking more about that in just a moment, but it's a great time to expand your, um, your sort of like cycle or circle of friends, I should say, and your cycle of relationships. If there hasn't been something, now's the time to, to meet new people. Uh, but by and large, what I see is creative gifts and learning coming forth. So if you're, uh, if you're retired, you could kind of embrace both of those energies. Let's now take a look at love. We have service coming through here and it says, I feel good when I can help others. What a nice connection to what I was just talking about. If you want to be a counselor, a teacher, a healer, a nurse, all of this energy is coming forth here and it's saying I, you really want to make a difference. And I love that. And we were talking at the very beginning about how the King of Pentacles is the provider for many out there. Don't be afraid again to receive that and let other people also be of service to you. It goes both ways. All right, let's take a look at this now in three different perspectives. We're going to start with those in a relationship first, then we'll move on to those that are seeking love or happily single. If you're in a current relationship, this is a moment of change. That is the crowning card. So things could be going next level. For those of you that have been dating for a while, working really hard on building a firm foundation in this relationship. Now we have a change moment where things could go next level. Um, this is a card of moving in with someone. This is an expansion to that love. And there is a balance, a balancing act that happens if you're in the throes of something new. So remember here, it's give and take. Uh, try to fight the fights worth fighting. Try to meet in the middle. Try to also communicate expectations, what's expected. So I definitely get a new pairing or partnering coming through for some of you. It's a big change. Give yourself time to get used to it. Some of you are dealing with something from the past. That inner child came through saying, hey, I have a wound already, per perhaps, when it came to truth and accountability. We need to deal with this. The good news is it feels like it's manageable. Sometimes we don't need to make a mountain out of a molehill. It may have been just something that someone forgot. They weren't intentionally trying to do something. So get to the bottom of a situation first. Don't make any assumptions. What does the Queen of Cups do at the center? She listens. She's really soaking it in and thinking, oh, is this history repeating itself? Or is this just something small, a simple mistake? Tune in, trust your heart, trust your third eye and your own insights and make a decision based on the present situation, not some sort of a wound from the past. It feels manageable. If there is something, sometimes we just say, yeah, I'll do this. And I'm like, oh, I forgot I had a lot of, as long as there's accountability. I think this is the, the, the key here. If the partner says, you're right, I should have done it. It wasn't intentional. And you feel the authenticity, good. If you know that there's more to it, that's a deeper conversation. But based on the cards, some of some of what's coming through could just be a forgotten promise. So, you know, write things down, keep each other accountable, but also don't punish one another unnecessarily. We're all human at the end of the day. Um, there could be also really positive change. Birth is a part of this. So new child coming into the fold, um, new. And again, so. It could be two of you moving together, someone new in the mix. It could also be something really new that you're both dealing with, but it does feel like you can excel at this. If you lost someone recently in your life, um, a parent or a loved one, this is when you come closer as well. So 
pretty positive overall here. And this is just about accepting, giving and receiving, finding the balance between the two of you. But I like what I see overall. If you're in a point where you're ready to exit out of a relationship, it can be so amicably. However we look at present situations, it looks pretty good overall. The only thing that will tear down anything that I see here in the structure is a lack of truth or a lack of accountability. And you'll know it when you see it. Uh, it you'll know that it's not just a little uh, thing to ignore. It, usually these things are very clear, okay? So be honest with each other. Focusing on those looking for love. You're going to pull in someone from a past life as one of the potential partners. You'll know that too when you see it. The energy is around truth this time. So this time, again, leading with honesty and accountability. That's all you need to really focus on in that. Um, here's what I see as some challenges in both existing and also those looking for new relationships. There's a lot going on with your schedule. School, home life, work, obligations. It feels like you can delegate or remove or drop a couple things. Choose what matters most. Make room for something new. Some of you are on a rebound. You may also meet someone who's on a rebound. Just take it one step at a time. You do not need to pick out China on the first date. Just have a first date. Then if you want to have a second date, have a second, then have a third. One day at a time, one date at a time as well. But could you land on something serious? Yes. I love that we have the lovers here in the near future. Just make sure that everything's happening in a timeline that feels right for you. I think the main thing here is to take your time, okay? What kind of energy might you be pulling in? Someone may already have um, a family, extended family here. So this could be uh, children in the picture is what I'm saying. So if you were to join with this person, it could be a ready-made family and that's something to look at. Uh, we have an earth sign and we have a water sign. I kind of like the energy of the water sign more. Uh, she's more receptive, she's easygoing. She's ready to step into whatever with you, like new opportunities. And so this seems a little bit more compatible. This one needs a little bit more support and is ready to settle down faster. Okay. For those of you that are happily single, good for you. For those that are happily single, you can do so much right now, change wise. So some of you are going to focus on growth, school, education. Some of you are also going to focus on personal development, changing things and healing things from the past. Um, for many of you, there's just a success trajectory that's happening. And so you can just really drink it all in. But you're still going to meet a lot of people. This is colleagues. This is friends. This could be a new best friend. There is still the potential for love to come through. You may not be looking for it, but it could be knocking on the door anyway. And I only say it if I see it. I just see so much love here in the cards that it might be hard to escape it. Even if you're trying to keep your privacy, people may be still knocking on the door. Okay, destiny, pretty powerful here. We have death mother. Um, so this for many of you, it's just another personification of death. It's the creative force associated with death too. Um, it's also saying we don't need to be afraid of it. It can be something that um, when you lean into it, it's just possibilities. Some of you, we could also read this at, you know, sort of like face value. You may have just lost someone, a parent, a mother. Um, you may also just be dealing with how do I create the change? How do I own this energy of change in my life? But it's interesting that it's mother because it's birthing. So it's this. One thing is exiting. One thing is entering. Just embrace the two at once, even though it's a lot to wrap your head around. And that might actually be what's going on for many of you this month is, you know, just really, really good and unexpected news and then a challenging change or loss. And life sometimes gives us those two conflicting and challenging things at once. But there is a lot to love this month. Let's give you a little bit more clarity by going into sun rising and moon. And then that hopefully will help you out. And then we'll look at the... Um, Final question in just a few moments here. Sun, rising, and moon first. Sun, rising, moon. They're all good. It's, it's a good month. All right, so let's begin with the sun sign. Strategic leadership. This is one of the best emperor cards. Um, he is holding that chess piece. He's sitting there um, really thinking through the next move. 
And then it looks like he might have Mars behind him. He's willing and ready to fight for what matters most. We also see the Ankh tattoo there, which is showing the ability um, to wield power when necessary. But he's really thoughtful about it. He's not pushy. He's not um, over the top or anything. So you have what it takes to lead with success, be strategic in your choices, and be ready and willing to step up to the plate. The Emperor card is also a paternal energy. We have two paternal cards here, also the um, King of Pentacles in reverse. This King of Pentacles is saying, I need something in order to get to the next level. This Emperor is strategic enough to get it. I really feel like if you need more time, energy, resources, or whatever, you can make it happen. All right? So step up to the plate. You've got the power, quite literally. Rising sign, the fool. This is the new beginning. Ends and beginnings. We got them both here. And it's saying it's worth it. It's fun. It's a reset. The fool also is playful. Um, foolish, but in the best way. It's just sort of saying, like, I'm not going to take everything so seriously. I'm going to just take it a step at a time. I don't have to be perfect. I can have fun. I can laugh. Use the joyful energy of the... Uh, the, the inner child here, because the fool in the major, arca uh, major arcana would be like the child. So don't be afraid to kind of just take it a step at a time and reinvent yourself with this. Playful energy is what I'm getting here. And also knowing when to laugh and not be so serious would be beneficial. But a fresh, clean start. Leave behind whatever it is from the past that might be making you feel doubtful or uncertain and just take it uh, for whatever today brings. Going to Moon Sign, we have a leadership card yet again. King of Wands, second only to the Emperor, which you got. Um, we've got a lot of King energy coming forth today. So what is the King of Wands good at? Innovation, leadership, thinking through things. Even if someone else can't figure it out, you can. And what I like about this King of Wands is he knows what he knows, and he also knows what he doesn't, and he'll lean on experts. So be ready and willing to ask for support or to say, I just attended a meeting today uh, where so, there was a really good public speaker and they continually said, I will follow up on that. I don't have the answer now, but I will send you an email later tonight. I need to check the information. Or you know what? There's another person that is going to be better suited for that. Let me put you in touch with them. That's a great way to say, I don't know. <laughs> it's saying, I'm gonna help you solve it by making a connection happen, or let's go offline later and we'll talk it out. We'll figure it out together. So know what you know, know what you don't know, and help people solve problems if neither of you know the answer. It's, it's about making connections, right? And this is you, by the way, right? Look at you coming through strong and courageous in the background. Let's now take a look at the final question for today. This is your chance to ask anything that I haven't yet um, answered and just focus on that question and we'll see what spirit has to say. Okay, as if there weren't already enough cards around love, we have one more. This two of cups is reversed. So let's break it down. First and foremost, the two of cups represents love, partnership, friendship, and receptivity. When it's reversed, some of you may be feeling that you might be pulling away from a partner in your life. You could also be the feeling that someone is pulling uh, towards you and there's this tug of war. So in that sort of energy or that sort of situation, it's important to establish expectations, needs, and, um, and basically desires so that everybody knows where they stand. And if you want it, great. If you don't, like I said, speak up and make sure that Honesty and, and accountability are leading the day here. There could be an unexpected and joyful bit of news that lands in your lap. Someone um, eyes you for promotion. Someone says that they're interested in dating you. Someone meets you for the first time and says, hey, do you want to be friends or do you want to hang out? So we just get an invitation for a connection and you get to decide if that's what you want. Ultimately, as a yes, no, this is a yes. There is a nuance with this that there is power in numbers. You can do more together than you can do alone. And it's time to get out of the hermit shell, which we saw here. And so don't be afraid to receive. And we have that re receptivity kind of energy coming through with service to give and 
to receive. That's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, do me a favor, please like and subscribe. It helps channel growth. It helps me understand what you like, and uh, I appreciate it. You can also give me a follow across social media. It's always my full name on all major platforms. Remember, I do not offer any private readings. If you see someone trying to do that or direct message you, just block report, leave a comment below so I can do the same. If you ever need to find me across social media and you want to make sure that you're looking at the right uh, handle, go to my website. Everything's spelled out there or on the main channel page here on YouTube. There's a bunch of links there and you can follow those as well. And that, my friends, is everything. Thank you for giving back and for being a part of this. And by the way, if you would like to give a little bit more, you can do it through Super Stickers, Super Chat, or memberships here. But in the meantime, thank you for being the best part of what I do here for your love, your support, your participation. You make it all possible. Take care.